This episode of Checking In With is sponsored by Pizza Packet. Enjoyed by millions nationwide, Pizza Packet provides portion control, pre-packaged spice, and Parmesan packets. Made with only premium quality ingredients, Pizza Packet is the most convenient and most cost-effective way to provide added value to your customers. During these challenging times, every penny counts. Pizza Packet saves you time and money and is a much more hygienic and sanitary option over dirty shakers. Check out PizzaPacket.com for all of your packaging needs. Hey there, welcome to Checking In With. I'm your host, Jeremy White, Editor-in-Chief of Pizza Today Magazine. I'm joined today with uh, by Denise Greer, Executive Editor of Pizza Today. Hey, hello everyone. Hey, Denise. And we are here today with Scott Sandler of Pizza Head there we go. in St. Louis, Missouri. What's up, Scott? Hello, Scott. How are you do- how's, every- how's everybody doing? How are you is a million dollar question. You know, uh, just way, as I say, wading through shark infested waters right now, you know, getting hit on uh, all sides with a lot of things to think about, you know. Yeah, so, it's, uh, it's been a tough time. Besides COVID, what else is going on in, in Pizza Head? Well, uh, because of COVID, we, I talked to Denise. Oh, the, when did we talk? Did we talk? Uh, was that the COVID? last time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the last time we talked was uh, for our virtual expo and you right. had kind of, uh, you were still shut down uh, and you were doing your bagels. So uh, yeah, we were, oh, yeah. So we, 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 re, we, re, we reopened April 2nd with just to go and delivery. We were already doing 50% to go and delivery anyway. And uh, it's actually worked out real well for us. Uh, labor hours are less and revenue is the same or more with only six days instead of seven and our hours are uh, limited uh, just doing whole pies no slices any anymore for now not sure where not sure where we're going right now but for now it's good and uh things are you know we're selling out friday saturday sunday for sure we're selling out uh, so we kind of went from a you know serve everyone all the time 12 hours a day seven days a week to now we're open three to eight for pickup and you can you know, only online ordering. Now we're starting to take some orders when people walk up, but mainly online ordering. Uh, I set that whole things up, uh, that, that whole thing up and uh, it's been working like a charm. You know, uh, I think some other friends of mine, like Scotty in Portland, like they're doing phone only. They're not doing online and they're, you know, they got somebody doing the, you know, the timings. And so all that uh, is on, done online for, for us. So I chose the online route and maybe some people are doing both. We didn't want to take order, order, orders over the phone and do online orders at the same time. Uh, you know, it just, it, it, it chews up too much labor of the, for my operation, the way I have it, which is like, uh, I have a certain flow now that's pretty, pretty simple. How hard was that to set up on the fly? Because you set that up kind of in a matter of uh, uh, three weeks. days, weeks. <laughs> I spent about a week on the online store and I'm pretty good at that stuff. And, you know, you had to wait an hour to get anybody at uh, Weebly, which is owned by Square, which is the, the platform. And so in order to get somebody to help you. So once I got one of those people on, I kept them on for like two hours and just went through the whole thing. I mean, I had done some research on it myself and was slowly building it but there was a few little things that I needed to understand uh, and it's still a little glitchy but it's it actually it's it, it you know there's still some manual stuff involved but um, you know uh, it's it, it I'd say it's a really good system for the fact that you're not you know it's part of square so um, that's it's just been working really well for us you know so I, I mean pizza is obviously, a food that is going to be consumed you know even if the you know the you know the world is falling apart people are still going to eat pizza i think yeah so what are you getting uh from your city or your county or your state in terms of guidance and in terms of when you might be able to have your customers sit down in your restaurant again well we could already do that right now we're just not doing it because there's no until I figure out a finance, there's no financial gain to right now to have people inside because our numbers, which is crazy, our weekday numbers now are significantly better than they were before, you know. So, you know, that was like full boat, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, slices, 
but for some reason with the whole pies because they're big and they're 20 inches and you know the people with the toppings on them so you know we have no problem selling out 90 pies every day you know that $30 ticket average or more you know do the math but it's uh you know we sell some drinks too not nearly as much beer as we were selling before but then we have the bagels the bagels are kind of experimental i'm not doing like not making a lot of money on the bagels right now i'm just sort of figuring out yeah i'm not even sure if i'm going to continue doing bagels like it you know we'll see we'll see it's just there's a lot of things up in the air there's two opportunities we're one next door to me one across the street you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunities or uh, not do anything and just keep doing what we're doing. And eventually we'll probably have slices, but probably not go back to the way we were. So we'll probably have a, a limited amount of slices and maybe do one or two only a day to start and then have a separate register. So people will come in to the front. Um, I plan on doing a stand on, standing only uh, slice situation when we come back to slices. Not like, oh, you guys have, Jeremy's been to Pizza Head, so. Yeah. Denise, you haven't been there, right? I have not been yet. Okay, no. so you saw Jeremy, you know, the, the dining hall. We turned that whole back area into like the bakery and like supplies. And I took my ovens that were stacked and I moved them this way. And I took the refrigerator out. So our pizza making is so the guys don't have to like, you know, all these little like little just little things that small things that help you so much. Uh, so I don't want to put the fridge back into the kitchen because our kitchen's so small because then my guys would have to like bend down again for because we have four decks yeah. so all, this whole thing has really like just been an opportunity in a way uh yes. you know it's, it's been unfortunate but you got to like to make the best of it uh, so yeah it sounds like you've been able to really dial in on your efficiencies uh with your kitchen and do you th now what was your what was your slice percentage to whole pies before uh covid happened uh, what like were you doing? 50, 50. It's like 50, 50, yeah. probably. Um, okay. You know, what's happening now, I think why financially it's better on the weekdays is because when people order online, they order, tend to order um, more. They tend to order like two or three pizzas or they put lots of toppings on and they can't get slices now. So I think a lot of people uh, are maybe buying pizza head, let's say not as often because they're not getting the slices but when we get the people that are buying their average ticket or average ticket is high because they're they're just adding stuff on you know as far as you know how it is when people buy stuff online it's sort of uh and it, i i a lot of people that are doing online like me who are quick service are seeing themselves doing better than they were before so it's not just like me because i'm great or anything it's just more like the people who have set this online ordering system up with quick food you know asian food or a mech you know food that like can can go out um uh, quickly so That's scott with all that being said and everything you're experiencing right now it seems to me from the outside looking in that you could eliminate a lot of headaches a lot of hassle keep doing what you're doing and not even reopen to dine in and just simply do carry out <laughs> and delivery. Is that something that's crossing your mind as a viable long-term solution for you? Uh, you know, or are you eager to get people back in seats? Well, I'm kind of torn because, you know, I'm getting older and like this, this delivery to go situation without having anybody in it is less problematic. Uh, you know, but on the other side, you know, as a community, you know, Pizza Head, people loved coming there and hanging out. And uh, I like going to places and hanging out, you know, so sort of taking away that that thing from the community of people who love Pizza Head and love to go and get a pint and hang out inside to hear the music, eat some slices. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, sort of at a dilemma. Um, but I'm also tracking the, you know, the habits of the customers, like, you, you know, if as long as we're selling our 90 pies every day, yeah, there's no absolutely no reason to do anything else. But if those pie whole pie orders start decreasing for some reason, because more and more places are opening, um, you know, or people are just, 
you know, I, I don't know, you know, it's sort of like, it's possible I have a plan for slices. Um, I was talking to Scotty also, from, you know, Scotty's pizza parlor. Sure. Yeah. He's also questioning whether he wants to do slices ever again, you know, so it's sort of, and we both started off as, you know, slice places. That was our, that's the thing. You know, I like to get a slice too, but you know what, in St. Louis, to be honest, and it, I'm in an area that has probably the best foot trap, one of the best areas to have fo uh, for foot traffic in St. Louis. And it's still kind of like anemic compared to, you know, where you should have a slice place. Meaning like you need a slice place where you have high foot traffic, high density. You know, we have that it, 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 as far as for St. Louis, we have that. But, you know, if you look at the big picture, I mean, our lunches were just not you know, they weren't robust. They, you know, weekends were okay. Saturday, Sunday were, were fine. But like the weekdays, lunches were just, you know, not good. Uh, and so it's like, we're not even, a, I don't, you know, why should I open for lunch if, you know, it, it's sort of, it's, again, it's a catch 22. It's sort of, you know, on one hand, what's the best for me? And then on the other hand, what's the best for, uh, you know, the community? Yeah, I see the conflict. Denise, we can see yeah. the conflict. We can hear it in his voice. Um, just, Absolutely. You know, and, and, and he's not the only one out there. We, have, we hear from op pizza, pizzeria operators on a daily basis who are very conflicted right now. They just, they just don't know what to do. They are living in a new normal. Um, we hate that phrase, but it's just it, it's the fact of the matter. And they just don't know what to do. Do we return to slices? Do we return to, to sit down? Or do we just keep doing what we're doing right now and you know a lot of people are telling us it just like Scott okay. just said we are up right now yeah and and that's definitely echoed throughout the industry right down to operating hours you know if if lunch is not a viable option then why continue it is is kind of what we're hearing well, it was, out it was there a cre it was accretive in other words it was accretive we didn't lose money at lunch but you know the stress of you know, being open for 12 hours and like, you know, from 11 to four, you know, you have people there and, you know, you're, you're, you're open, but you're not making any money really. Like you're, you're just basically paying the expenses of the people there. And maybe, you know, you have a good lunch, you have a good week, good weekday, but it's not like that profitable. Uh, you know, it depends on what area you're in too sort of St. Louis is not a great lunch town unless you're a sandwich place. I mean, people just don't go out to lunch here in general. Yeah. They like big cities where people are like, boom, boom, they're going out for lunch every day or they're getting food in their office or they're whatever. Here people bring their food from home. You know, it's sort of like, I mean, I'm making, I'm making broad strokes, but it, it is true. Unless you're like a cheap sandwich place, your your lunches are like all these places opened for lunch and then closed for lunch and then open again and then close that's how it is in st louis sort of like people are still like still trying to figure out the lunch crowd which there really isn't but then um, unless Scott, you're a friend, you know, yeah. you've, you've got your vibe you do have a a unique pizzeria um for those who are watching and may not know uh, you, your customer base is different from theirs and we can get into that but you know you've got a little bit of a rock and roll theme um, and you are a vegan pizzeria. And vegetarian, vegetarian. And vegetarian, 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 yeah. uh, and vegan. Um, well, we so have vegan, but we have also dairy. Uh, I haven't, you know, even though I'm vegan, I left that because I'd alienate a lot of customers. And so that's always been kind of a conflict. You know, once you go all vegan, uh, you really, sure. it's, a whole nother, it's a whole nother pizza reality. Uh, which doesn't mean it's a bad reality. It's just a different reality than like even vegetarian is different from, you know, a full meat, you know, place, but we right. do have dairy cheese. So, but anyway, like you were saying, the place is cool to hang out, but you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're catering. You're not catering to the typical pizza consumer. Your, your customers are pretty rabid fans because you're providing a product they really can't get anywhere else. Well, and an experience too. But what's what's strange is that because of this shift, my customer base has shifted. You know, it's it's more, uh, you know, diff more of the people pulling up in like you know you know Lexus or something and getting a, getting a couple pies. And not that that's anything wrong with it, but it's sort of like our I think our average customer got older because of the whole pie thing now. And the well, you got to lay down, you know. 30, 40 bucks 
to get a pizza, basically, if you want a lot of toppings and or if you want a vegan, they're 20 inches. So they're kind of expensive for, you know, that slice. See, I'm cut. That's where the conflict is. I cut out all my slice customers, basically, mm -hmm. you know, the, pe the people, you know, whereas unless you're a couple or something or you have a family, why you're a single person, you're not going to order a 20 inch pizza. You know, you're just not going to. So I lost or you know unfortunately those customers are gone they could come back at any time as soon as i have slices but so it's a really yeah. interesting dilemma it's uh you know i i feel for your situation you've got a good thing going on but i can again i can see the conflict as you're trying to to figure out how you're going to navigate this yeah and i'm really curious of those uh you know those not that 90 pie goal you have has the mix of what people are ordering changed a lot with that new customer base um besides well, you know in the whole pies i should say well we have 12 whole pie options which are uh we have three build your own so we have the vegan build your own dairy build mozzarella cheese build your own and then a white pie build your own so then we have some like four or five we have some specialty pies um and most people are ordering um you know the build your own but like we sell a lot of the chicken tikka masala pizzas we have a barbecue chicken pizza we have like a veggie special that's like all the all our vegetables and you get a discount then we have a vegan meat lovers pizza and we have um uh, you know just a couple different we have a marinara we have a vegan margarita we have a regular margarita so there's enough variety there but i would say we're always like 50 50 vegan and vegetarian that's sort of what we sell 50 percent vegan 50 percent vegetarian okay I gotcha. so i haven't really seen like i would just say more people are adding more toppings now which is good for us because then the you know the price goes up and we're able to sell 90 pies you know, um, we've been consistently doing that since April 2nd, you know, some Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Thursdays, we might do 80, 85, maybe 75 on a bad day. But typically, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, always sell between 90 and 95, depending on like what we had left over from the day before. And then uh, sometimes Thursday, we sell out, uh, sometimes we sell out on Tuesday and Wednesday. So it's, and my staff loves it because we sell out and they're out of there like 745. You know, our last pickups, our last pickup 745. But it's getting, you know, that's one of the things we're going to talk about. Do we open later now? You know, there's just so many questions, so many decisions to make now. Because the it's summer, you know, our hours are first pickups 315, last pickup 745. That's how we have it now. Mm -hmm. Um and I again I don't really see the reason to change it if we're still selling 90 pies by five o'clock then why would we be open later you know um so yeah well we'll be uh, really interested to you know having you keep us posted on um on what's going to happen and what direction you go with that because uh, uh it's going to be pretty interesting to find out where you go yeah i think we need to follow up here i'm uh, here a couple months see what scott has decided and and what yeah, new like operational a, procedures it's like, a, it's, like a board, it's like a board game you know it's like your own board game that you created it's like okay you know, which step do i make um but i'm gonna let the market sort of you know direct what we're doing and again it's mainly that our main goal is to survive you know so anyway you know we have to survive so it's sort of if we're surviving with whole pies and you know our clientele you know, is a little bit more um, upscale or has a little bit more disposable income now. I mean, uh, you know, we're, we're working, we're trying to figure out that angle of how do we service that customer that, you know, the, the everyday customer, you know, sort of the, the way Pizza Head was before where we're, you know, serve anybody and everybody and everyone can afford our, our pizza, everyone. Because um, we have a slice for 275, the cheese slice that's big. So it's sort of egalitarian. Now we're sort of, you know, I don't know, it's sort of like, cause we're only doing whole pies. So it's, you know, it feels kind of, you know, but then again, it goes back to surviving. Like I'd rather survive and keep seven people employed and be in the community and be in the neighborhood than, than, than go out of business. So I think that's more important than kind of worrying about right now about 
the guy that can't or the person that can't get the slice for 275. You know, because if I did that, maybe I'd go out of business. Absolutely. I, I, you know, you're on the right track. It definitely seems that way. And um, like I said, I'm eager to follow up in a couple of months and see, see where this leads.